you so much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Uh, welcome to From Pen to Performance, Exploring Spoken Word Poetry with Spoken Views Collective. My name is Jamie, and I work for the Washoe County Library System. I am your library host for tonight's event. So I want to say thank you so much and welcome to all of our panelists and guests. We are so excited to have members of Spoken Views Collective joining us today for this special event in honor of National Poetry Month. Um, as I mentioned before, some members will be joining us from the Potentialist Workshop, which is a local performance venue and artist space. Um, and some folks will just be joining us virtually from their own uh, homes or where they're located. Um, and to go into a little bit of Spoken Views, um, Spoken Views Collective is a group of local performance poets who regularly host open mics and spotlight at various events. They host workshops and do community outreach, providing a much needed platform for spoken word poetry in the area. Our host tonight is Ian Watson, the current director and co-founder of The Collective. Ian is going to get us started tonight with an introduction to The Collective, and he will also be doing a reading in addition to that. Ian, thank you so much for joining us tonight and making this event possible. All right, thank you. We're excited to have the opportunity to perform for the library system and just let people know what we're doing. So um, thank you everyone who's joining and please feel free to uh, ask us questions if you're interested in how to get involved. We're more than happy to direct you to that. Um, a little thing about spoken word poetry, if you're unaware of what it is, um, there's a poet, Sarah Kay, and I think she kind of said it best um, when she said it's kind of like the marriage between uh, like theater and poetry, like just kind of page poetry. Um, so what we kind of do is a little more performance based. Um, it's still poetry, um, but it just kind of, we kind of pride ourselves usually on the performance aspect. Now, some of us are going to be reading usually. Um, sometimes it's encouraged to memorize pieces. Um, and you'll probably see that from a few of the poets. Um, but you know, there's no, there, there's nothing wrong with reading off the page. Um, but um, really strong performances are usually memorized. But um, yeah, it's uh, just it's kind of what embodies the whole spoken word thing. It's meant to be more performed than read off of a page. Um, so that's kind of what we do. Um, and uh, we basically started in, uh, the idea was kind of around 2006. It was about 2007 when we actually got on a, uh, got the opportunity to perform in a venue and the name Spoken Views was actually the name of the event, not so much the collective at the time. Um, so we kind of ran with it and we were like, that's a really cool name. And so we adopted that name for ourselves um, as a collective and we've had members come and go. It's kind of one of those kind of rotating door ideas where we We'll get a group of poets for like a year and then a lot of them move away and then we were lucky enough to get some new members. Um, we've been lucky enough to mentor some youth poets and send them to national competitions. There's a national competition called Brave New Voices and we were able to do that twice. Um, and then the operations of them, I, I believe got shut down before COVID hit and it wasn't COVID related. They were having some other issues. And we also sent a uh, team to the National Poetry Slam competition uh, one year. And that was the uh, first time Reno ever represented on a national stage like that. So um, we're kind of working up to getting back into those kind of um, opportunities to share our poetry in a national level. Um, but we really are focused on community and building Reno's uh, poetry scene up as the big cities sometimes have. Um, and uh, so we do open mics at the Holland Project, uh, usually monthly, and we do, we do open mics and we also do slam competitions and slam competitions are um, judged by random members of the audience and uh, they just judge you on a scale of uh, 0, 0.0 to 5.0 or no, 10.0. Um, now I'm blanking. It's been so long <laughs> since we've done a poetry slam. Um, but anyways, we get judged and um, uh, and yeah, you can just kind of go to the next round and there's usually three rounds and then the winner's picked. And it's kind of, you know, it's always random and it's fun. Um, and it's really not about the points. It's just a fun way to display poetry and make it a little more competitive. 
Um, so we throw those. We also go into schools. Um, we work with any anyone who reaches out to us and says, hey, we need some poets for the an event. Um, we're, we jump at that opportunity. So we're always happy to go into schools, go into uh, local organizations and uh, share what we do. And uh, we offer workshops and we have an uh, awesome collective, like a uh, kind of a offshoot collective at the university called Wolf Speaks. And that's an amazing group of poets. Uh, Passion, I believe is one of our poets that we'll be reading. And um, I believe is still part of it. I haven't really checked in with them lately, but it's an amazing group of poets. And um, I love that we have a, a university presence. So, and we're trying to get back into the high schools and uh, work with the students there. So um, that's a little bit about what we do. You can connect with us on um, all media platforms. Facebook is probably the best, um, but we do have an IG account. Twitter's not really that active at all. And uh, we do have a website and the website um, is kind of not being updated until we, uh, start back up with in-person events. So Facebook is kind of the best way to reach us right now. Um, and we will have some more events happening virtually. Um, and yeah, that's a little bit about who we are and what we do. Um, and if there's anything I forgot, I will jump in and make sure that I uh, share any ideas that pop in um, about us. But um, yeah, we, uh, we'll, we'll get this thing rolling, I think. And um, I'm gonna share a little poem. And this is, um, it's an older poem. I, I don't think I've really performed this much at all. Um, I was kind of digging in the archives and came up with something that I felt was a perfect introduction just to the, to the night. Um, it's pretty much untitled. Um, I don't really have a strong title that I'm happy to share at the moment, but um, so we'll just jump into it. We don't need more politicians. What we need are more magicians, architects of vibration, revolutionaries with conviction, alchemists who turn pain into beauty and weakness into strength, artisans of the surreal and abstract who use their words to paint. Those who aren't afraid to reach into closets and go to war with their skeletons. The ones who march up to stages, even when their legs feel like gelatin. See, much like Clark Kent, we peel back layers to expose these superhuman powers. It might not be an S on our chest or the ability to leap over towers, but we have layers, uncanny insight, ideas of vast dimensions. We express these truths that many are too afraid to mention. Flash the message and give direction to the lost. I say, flash the message so we can navigate through the dark. These are the bottled notes of the heart that made it to the shore, sacred manifestos buried deep within our core. These are stories passed down with a personalized twist. These are lost love letters that have been sealed with a kiss. These are one person's fears and another person's bliss. This is more than just poetry. This is the reason that we exist. So let our words dance tonight as we throw them to the wind. Let us give life to these moments that we share from our pens. Let the students be the teachers and the teachers be the students. Let us learn from each other as vibration flows through us. To the poets that are present, I thank you for your words. Keep writing and creating and never forget, the world is yours. All right, so there's my introduction. Um, and I'm just gonna hand it off. So I'm gonna introduce um, each poet just by their name. And when I say their name, they will be spotlighted and we'll jump into it. So. The first poet uh, that I'm going to introduce is Griffin. So Griffin, you're up. Hello. Hey. So as Ian said, my name is Griffin. And I'm going to read a poem tonight called This is the Poem. And it goes like this. A wise person told me recently, that if you're struggling with positive thinking, try neutral thinking instead. So I did, and it sounded like this. Every time you have to leave something behind, you also go somewhere new. I'm no better or worse than anyone else. I deserve the same things as everyone. Right now, I feel bad but I can't know how I'll feel tomorrow. Life is painful, but it's fun and even boring sometimes too. The world is full of evil, 
and good. I am somebody. This is the poem that reminds me I love people. I love them at airports, when they run to each other, when their luggage falls all over the ground while they hug, while they take photos together. I love people when they take photos together with their childhood friends, with their long lost fathers. I love people when they take photos with their grandmas. I love people who never take photos of people who don't know they're in photos. I love people who never take photos at home with a book, listening to a radio, getting frustrated with their tablet computers. I love people who keep trying new things until they work. I love people who keep trying, keep trying to connect, keep trying to build the perfect sandcastle, keep trying to heal old wounds, keep trying to learn something new, keep trying to remember their favorite tune. I love people who keep trying to live. Let's all keep trying to live. Let's live for our warm beds. Let's live for our families. Let's live for ourselves. Let's live for the literacy we have to understand this poem. Let's live because we were dead for an eternity before being born and we never even noticed. Let's live because this world will go on for an eternity after we are gone. This is the poem for when all hope is gone. This is the poem for when the community chest is empty, for when the end is nigh. This is the still here poem. It belongs to you. This is the not leaving poem. It was made for you. Read it when silence and screams have the same effect. Thank you. All right. So that was Griffin. Thank you for sharing. So I'm not sure if we're gonna wait a little, if there's any questions or how that works. Um, Jamie? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see any questions showing up in Zoom yet, um, but I will jump in and let you know if I see any for you guys. All right, thank you. Sure. All right, so that was Griffin. And next up, we are going to bring Passion to this virtual stage. So Passion, you are up. Hello. So um, I kind of just wrote this poem when um, my best friend asked me this question and she asked me um, what this quote means to her. So the quote says, she walks with footprints on her mind and I kind of just went off. She walks with footprints on her mind. I think of my higher self walking with me. The same way her toes greets the ground is the same way my conscious meets with me. Mostly unnoticed until I strip it naked, heel to the ground. I can't feel the earth since my soul has been covered with labels. I have to strip it bare, full face to the concrete. That way she feels the vibration, the baking pavement of the heat. Rising from the tamed forces of man-made structures, the sensation is always there. I'm just too scared to walk with no boundaries while my higher self is walking there. So that was my point. Hey, that was awesome. Thank you for sharing. It's been a minute. We've all been uh, in isolation and we haven't really been able to meet up and share poetry lately. And it feels good to hear the poets, especially ones I haven't uh, spoken to or talked, you know, or been in the presence of in the last few years. So um, this is really great. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to hand it to the potentialist. I will still introduce each poet as they come up to the mic. 
Um, but we have a few poets, uh, four poets um, that are stationed at the Potentialist Workshop and they're gonna be sharing their poetry from there. So I'm gonna hand it off to the first poet and Steve Elegant, you are up my friend. Hi everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Uh, this poem is untitled. I remember a spot on the sand, right on the shoreline. Waves crashing in front of me. Just resting, staring at an endless sea. Wanting to dissolve. Waiting to just fall apart. Listening to the sounds of the ever-present waves crashing and crashing. Wanting me to leave. To give up. To give in to find that piece of me and let it go. Let the world just go, sink beneath the sand and disappear. I remember the moment, that fighting moment, that piece of me gnashing and clawing in my chest. I remember the screams in the back of my eyes, wondering why it was I would give up on a life that had been a blossom and blooming and magic moments before my eyes, my fingertips were firecrackers. I remember so many fires before for dumpsters and in front of police officers so many times that we went crashing through the skies with our arms spread wide saying, world, take me. Take me if you can, because I am running until I fall down. I will build up everything I can with my two hands. And why would I give up on that? Why would I give up on the fires that I have started? Why would I let go of the person who gave this world meaning in my eyes? Because no matter what, it's only us that can truly give ourselves the answer. It's only us that can give ourselves a cure. We must stand up for ourselves sometimes. We must stand up and know that we are worth it. We must stand up and fight for us because no one else will give up on us if we don't. Thank you. I love hearing all the, the background clapping. It makes it sound like the authentic thing. Um, yeah, so what you're seeing at the Potentialist is actually uh, a little truer to what we do. Because, um, you know, with the with the virtual cam and everything, we're kind of isolated at our home, sitting down. So the performance sometimes isn't as powerful as what you're probably going to see at the Potentialist, where they actually have a stage and microphones. So um, that's kind of a, a way better idea of what we do at the Holland Project or just anywhere that has a stage. So um, we're going to keep things moving. And we have Jesse, and he's going to read a piece that he wrote especially for tonight. So we're going to hand it off to Jesse. All right, my friend. When I first moved here in September of 2014, after acquiring a roof over my head month to month for the in-between, the first act of establishment I performed to root myself regionally was to obtain a Washoe County Library card. A library singularly executes the hat trick of encouraging imagination and wonder to roam freely on the planes of existence, whether escapism or inspired evolution. Elevating knowledge as power to both enhance the individual and elect, erect and effect social justice movements, elegantly imbuing its patrons with a sense of home. This piece, entitled Believe, was written as an homage to that hat trick. Life is more than billboards and memes, more than kill joys and designer jeans, yet foreclosure on your dreams isn't what it seems at first. It shows you're more than just moonbeams and stardust, more your soul screams it will burst. It shows you've made it this far because you didn't give up when things got worst. 
But what if the hole you've allowed to be poked in your cup is filling someone else's up and they're so stoked they joke they might erupt? Daydreams with a sold sign up out in front. It may seem like it's never enough until the final take and the director yells cut. Until you visit that privatized aisle with a diamond-eyed smile from ear to ear. Escaping the wear and tear of this world for one infinitely dear, one you see clear. Running my finger down the countless spines gives me a tingling feeling in mine. As if I'm capable of absorbing the stories that have come before me line by line and living out the moral entwined as needed bearing fruit as proof upon the vine. I might carry this delightfully varied, unrightfully buried, slightly harried stack of books in my trunk where space is tight and sparing all the way home from my visit to the library. Though I'm shy and the world can be scary, nestled between the pages of a good book is the vessel to ferry me. Beyond what I thought was possible, carry me when my burdens felt droppable, staring me in the face until flight felt unstoppable, leaving me wondering if this wanderlust will ever be satisfied, as I'm glad that my constitution rest in bone has been ratified, no longer sad that I am no longer gratified by a wild Saturday night, rather by a childlike ride on the rhythms of another's testimony. To be blessed, if only to read a great show-stopping poem when I'm lonely, knowing the author of life, the master artist in the sky, head librarian on high, will never disown me. To the wordsmiths, my homies, the ones who truly know me, my sisters from another mister, my brothers from another mother, thank you for making the glory of my life impossible to judge by its cover. Thank you for encouraging me to add my verse like Robin said in Dead Poets to Storybook Lovers. So keep your dreams, leap into bravery, elevate blessings to the cursed, and hug your kids before they grieve. Fill the journals, read the reams, dismantle all forms of slavery. You don't have to visit the biggest little city plaza sign on first in order to truly believe. Right. All right. There was like a little lag. I was just wondering. All right. So thank you, Jesse. That was awesome. Um, I know Jamie enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, you just made all the librarians so very happy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's been amazing so far. All right. Um, so yeah, I, what I love about this is everyone has their own unique style. And that's the beautiful thing about spoken word poetry, kind of like how I mentioned in my poem, like we're kind of like superheroes in a sense. And we, we have these superpowers and we're all kind of unique in our own delivery and own way we, you know, manage our words on the page. So that's the wonderful thing about spoken word is it, it can, it can be yours. You, you own that. That is you. That is a reflection of your soul and, and what you're about. And the way you choose to deliver it is, you know, it embodies who you are. You know, there's no right or wrong way to really do it. I mean, we're all influenced by poets that we've grown up listening to and performances we've seen, but we, we kind of make it our own. So, um, Yes, I'm, I'm loving, loving this so far. All right, um, so we're gonna keep it moving. We have a couple more poets and uh, we just uh, were blessed with a, a new uh, member. And I'm so happy that she's part of the team um, and she's uh, really working to throw some events and do some amazing things. So I'm gonna hand it off to Steph Mystic. All right, it's all yours. Thank you, Ian. Thanks everyone for being here with us. It is truly a pleasure. This is Mars 142. Curiosity turns the wheels of my mind. Like from the sun, 142 million miles. I become productive once I focus, giving way to this determined power. Adventurous intellect, analytical, practical, competent, generous with its ideas, but I must be decisive. Being loyal to me, sometimes competitive, only showing what it wants me to see, but curiosity keeps it turning, and my soul for truth is yearning. 
keeps the mind hard working, creating a pole, mechanism unknown, an equation to land on, a place to call home. Beneath the illusions, visiting Osiris on his throne, the death of an idea is not the death of my soul. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Steph. All right, yeah, and uh, Steph does a cool thing every Wednesday uh, on her um, Instagram, I believe. Um, she goes live every Wednesday, um, I think in the uh, morning-ish, uh, late morning, and uh, shares poetry, and that, that's a really cool thing. And Jesse also does a, um, a Sunday event uh, through it's Baruka. Yes, it's 11 a.m. in the morning on Wednesdays. Sorry to cut you off. Oh, no worries. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, and we, and then Jesse does a uh, Sunday um, poetry reading with kind of like a workshop, workshop um, through Baruca Theater. He is like a poet in residence at Baruca Theater. Um, so uh, we're, we're active on online, but we're really looking forward to getting back into the swing of live events because it's, it's magical when you see a really awesome night of uh, spoken word poetry. So we're gonna, we have one more poet and we are gonna close out the night. And um, I am proud that we have a poet laureate in our uh, collective. Um, Pam Pantoja is our current um, city poet laureate for Reno, Nevada. And it's an honor that he's representing Spoken Views Collective. And, um, and he does many more things around the community. So um, please, Give your attention to Mr. Pam Pantoja. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Rumors. Rumors, Reno, man. Uh, you know, I, you know, like I stopped like denying any rumor I heard about myself about six years ago. I'm just, no matter how crazy would any, I just, I'm like, yeah, I did that. I, fucking, I flew like Superman. It was great. Um, and language, whatever, man. whatever that, oh my God. I'm the poet laureate. I shouldn't swear. I'm so sorry, library system. And my child's here too. Good job, Pan. Um, we'll just, that's a rumor. So we'll just, like, but I let this rumor, this latest rumor that I heard about myself, I'm, I went to the coffee shop. I got my, you know, green tea and I heard a rumor about myself. And please, everybody, can we just make this one be true? The guy, the guy leans in from across the coffee shop and he's like, the you know, and he's like, hey, um, I, I heard you were like secretly a millionaire. And I'm like, yes, yeah, make, let's all, come on, everybody, let's make that one true. If, no, I'm not rich, man. Have you ever, like, I'm not rich. Have you ever like tried to like separate out, uh, you know, like get an ice cube out of the freezer and they're all stuck together and you're just like, like trying to get that thing out? imagine that, but like inside the ice cubes is your wood. And if you don't get it out, your family's going to freeze. No, I'm not rich. Like I went, like, I went, I opened up a gallery once on fourth street. This old man tricked us into like fixing his whole place up. None of us were making any money and it's my night and I'm tired and I have to go out and get the sign. And I grab the sign and I hear <laughs> behind me and I turn around and just do with a gun. And he's, and, and like, I saw the gun, I saw the guy and I'm like, do you want money? I'm like, look, look at my shoes. Like, like, do you want me to, like, you want to come to the gallery? I'll draw you a picture. Like, I don't have any, what are you talking about? And the guy's like, no, 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 no. He put his gun away and he left. He felt bad for me. Am I a millionaire? No, but like, but like, let's make that one true though. Please, please. Let's, let's, let's make that true. Pam Pantoja. Um, yes. This is the universe. Oh man. Why aren't you with your other gallery right now helping fix the floors? Look, I'm going to go there. I got my kid and like, I'm like, I'm performing for the library system and I'm not swearing. And, and, you know, um, like I can't be in two places at once. Yes, you can. 
Okay, say way no more home chase. This place, the place, the place with purple pleasure. Try to put a number, but it's too big to measure. Help and help us fiends, and it brings me no leisure. Hey, way go, way go, way go, ain't no way home. Home bow the wind somehow. Any gone, daddy gone, daddy gone, daddy gone. Nothing solid, bone to bone. Crush Cupid's wings, swing from a ladder. Hey, quick, go slick, go pound. Nothing matters. Flat as flaunts with specific rights. Hooks and crooks and nuns of plastic mass. I'm held against my thoughts. I'm held against my thoughts, and I'm holding. I'm rolling rhythm like drum smoke. Bow down, all you brilliant folk. Bees knocking bloomers, kicked out of sock drawers on arrows air, supporting fancy fellas who just don't care. So buyer be buyer be buyer beware. Bye bye birdie pointed fingers in the air. Sparklers, sprinklers, spanking spears. Deathless listeners with bat like ears, but ain't nothing being heard. Ain't nothing being heard. Ain't nothing being heard. I'm loving sophisticated turkeys with stuff and coming so close to the rest that ain't nothing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, plastic. You can't have it. This ain't my planet. Where them Dr. Kings and them Kennedys, French revolutionaries, Jesus, Muhammad, Malcolm X, Cesar Chavez, all them kids at Tenement Square, the hippies from the 60s with their long hair, Nelson Mandela, Thomas Jefferson, the Constitution, Lincoln, Howard Zinn, Chief Joseph, yo, where you been? Cause I'm sick of these politics. Ain't nobody gay. Whoop, whoop. Here come the karma, please, to lock my mind away. Two parts, one whole, and I work for pay, and I still wind up broke at the end of the day. Now I'm racist. Cause half of me is privileged. This child from the stars, man, this child raised the village. Why don't you tell me which part I should hate? In this climate of change, is it already too late? I love both of me the same. I'm half brown. I'm half a tour of Europe, and I feel like an alien from a planet that blew up. I'm forced for this oil the elitist men threw up. Living proof that we're all the same. And if we all get to loving, we can share a last name. Most beautiful world full of mutts like me. Speak from your guts like me. Don't care like me. We'll live a and see. How do we share this? Let me see. Let me see you. Let me see you. Let me see you. I love you guys very much. Keep creating. And let's make me a millionaire before the year's out. That'd be great. <laughs> I'll see you guys. Thank you, Pan. Yes, let's all be millionaires. That sounds good. All right. Well, that concludes the uh, a Spoken Views Poets. So, Jamie, if there is anything we can answer or any questions you have, we are happy to do that. Oh, it uh, looks like um, our, our Washoe County Tech person actually has a question. So we will see what they would like to know. Um, I, um, you know, one of the questions I had while we're waiting for other questions to come in is I, I know, and I think I might know part of the answer to this, but I know a lot of you um, do the snapping instead of clapping to sort of celebrate, you know, each poet after they've performed. Um, can you explain a little bit about, you know, maybe the significance of that or the tradition I'm, of that? Actually, I'm actually really happy you brought that up because I've recently kind of discovered something. And um, so I believe the snapping happened because they were throwing poetry events at certain venues that couldn't be that loud. So the applause and the clapping would disturb like the other um whatever was around that business, they might've been doing it in like a small place that shared another, um, you know, it like could have been a coffee house. I don't really know what the whole origin story is, but there's a, a certain poet that I've really um, started getting into. Um, and she absolutely hates the idea of snapping. She's like, that is so cliche that the poets do that. <laughs> and I, I respect her a lot, but like, we just kind of adopted that in the poetry world. And um, as kind of, you know, it's just like the poet clap, it's kind of been adopted as the poet clap, but the origin is just really um, not being able to give that poet a uh, big, loud, you know, applause and screaming and yelling. So that's kind of the origin of the snaps as, as far as I um, have learned. And I know, I, I feel like I've seen it on, you know, maybe some movies featuring like beat poets uh, mm. from, from the 60s and maybe like the late 50s. So yeah, I feel like, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense that it would be like a quiet way to celebrate poetry. I love yes. that. <laughs> um, we did have a question from our tech person. Uh, he would like to know uh, when you are writing, um, do you think just about the poem or do you plan performances as part of the process? Um, I will let other people um, chime in. Um, personally, I, I kind of think about the performance. I write a few lines and then I kind of say it out loud and then I kind of imagine myself on stage as I'm, um, 
you know, and I, it's kind of like a real time edit to me. I, I just kind of see what sounds right, which feels right, where the, you know, rhythm, um, the beat of the poem is. And, uh, but I always picture myself performing it. Um, and that could be a good or bad thing because sometimes you should just write for the sake of like getting everything out that you need to. But I'll let other poets um, chime in. Yeah, so to repeat the question, uh, when you're writing, do you think just about the poem or do you plan performance as part of the process? If any, um, if any other um, panelists would like to chime in, uh, just unmute and go for it. Yeah, uh, Griffin? <clears throat> I can speak to this one uh, because I have like a kind of interesting way to answer this. Um, so I teach a poetry writing class at Worcester High School, and I give this as a prompt to my students at some point because it is exactly my process. So whenever I'm thinking I want to write a poem, uh, what I do is I sit down and I ask myself first, like, what are all the words that describe the way I'm feeling? And I just like write them all down. And then I'm like, okay, cool. So then what are some things that remind me of this? Like, what are some like places or objects that remind me? of like how I'm feeling and I'll write all those things down. And then be like, okay, cool. Now I've got this word bank of like particular images or particular colors or words that describe where I'm at. And then I'll just try to use all of those words in the piece. So this is like um, my favorite way to approach writing a poem, which is like sit down first and write out like a word bank of all the things that describe where you're at and then everything you can remember that kind of reminds you of those things. And then just try to include as many of those images as you possibly can in expressing what you're feeling. That's kind of my favorite way to approach like writing a poem. Like if somebody uh, like put me at gunpoint right now and was like, write a poem. This is exactly what I would like to sit down and do. So like, cool, fun question. Thanks Griffin. Anyone else want to chime in about their process? Um, I was kind of just taking notes on what you were saying, Griffin, but um, I like to have a dialogue or a conversation, and I guess by them asking me questions or vice versa, that dialogue just turns into a full-on tangent um, of rhymes and poetry. Most of them, I'd say like the ones that I come up with on the spot are in my phone. I'll probably like never share them because yeah. And then <laughs> I guess the ones that I feel um, most inspired by, like I'll elaborate on them and try to see myself performing it in front of a stage, if that makes sense. Thanks, Passion. Yeah, um, I, I, I appreciate like everybody who plans stuff out. I do, I try not to even think about it. And, um, and uh, I try my, my really hardest in the entire process, like from, from writing it to performing it to, uh, to let it be in the now and let it be just happening. Um, and so I, uh, I, I like, I, I think I put like 40 years of thought into it, but I, I put no thought into it. I don't, I don't plan or think it out. Yeah. For, for me, it's a little bit of both, actually. I feel like the best thing when you're doing anything creative is to not necessarily stick to any rules. But having a structure could definitely be helpful sometimes. And there have been moments where an idea has sprung and I've thought, wow, this would be really powerful if I performed it. And so I do envision myself standing, speaking, how do I want to write this? How do I want the tone to be? But then there's other times when an idea just rushes through. Sometimes I can't even write as fast as it comes. I need to just say it out loud. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just letting things happen. And I feel that in moments where I try to think, that can get cut. So I feel like it's important for anybody that's, that's listening, that's interested, and that asks that, to know that it doesn't need to look any specific way. You know, you just got to do it. Thank you. I have a varied approach where I start with the text itself and focus on that until I believe I have that as a kind of a rough draft, if, if you will. 
of things to start saying out loud. And then my approach that I like, because I'm into nature therapy, is to go out with my dogs in the desert once I have my rough draft and start saying it out loud and drilling it. And usually that finishes off the editing process of the textual poem that I've started with by focusing on the rhyming scheme and the rhyming patterns and the certain words and phrases that I turn. Uh, and that's how I come up with my final draft. So it's both pen and performance uh, with the starting on the pen and ending with the performance. Thanks, Jesse. And we have, um, well, does Steve I, want to respond? I'm going to respond because I'm the different one out of sure. everyone. Um, so I write poetry. I, I, I go over every line, every word. I, I want it to be in a specific way. I don't perform any of that. Um, the way I perform poetry is I think of, like, like Griffin was saying, I think of a theme. Like earlier tonight, I was using fire and water as, as a theme. And I come up with an opening line and let whatever is in me that needs to get out along those lines out in the best words I can come up with on the spot. And that is literally how I, I, I do performance poetry. My hand. Thank you. you want to say bye, uh, we have a couple more questions coming in. Oh, does he want to respond? <laughs> <clears throat> well, I was, um, so and we can have a story for a little bit. <laughs> Bob, Bob the dinosaur. Bob the dinosaur. What? Bob the dinosaur. That Bob sounds like a poem waiting Bob. to be written. So I dump all the hard. And then story them and then and then he started, he started the whole hound. Oh no, okay, thank you, Axe. <laughs> the end. <laughs> thank you. Awesome, we love it. <laughs> we have a couple more questions. Um, there is uh, someone, let's see, I think we had Amanda would like to know, um, do you always have your poems rhyme? And maybe someone could jump in and talk about rhyming with spoken word poetry. Does it happen? Does it not happen? Is it against the rules? What's the deal? Um, yeah, I'll answer that. Um, it really doesn't matter. Uh, some of us, like myself and Jesse, are very heavy on the rhyming schemes. Uh, Pan does that from uh, time to time, too. Um, but then there's other poets that you saw tonight that don't rhyme at all. There is definitely a rhythm and like a meter that you know most of us kind of internally have that we like to follow. Um, but there is no rules about rhyming. Some of us just feel more comfortable. I come from a hip hop background. I grew up watching Deaf Poetry Jam. So a lot of the poets that I was exposed to and just with the music that I listen to, I um, just kind of pick that up as a way to write. And it does really help me transition my lines from one line to another because I like to play with the words and see how the words are related. Like my last word of the line will sometimes be connected to the first line. Sometimes I do the internal rhyming um, but I've, I've written poems that don't rhyme at all I like the challenge of it it doesn't feel as natural um, but uh, to me but I do like the challenge of trying that I'm essentially the same approach as Ian so I concur with everything that he just said um, I, I grew up uh, thinking of uh, rhyme schemes and meters as parts of sonnets which are very structured in a very specific way. And um, they're always either about love or about death. And I, I tried to think about it in a, in, in the, when I do poetry, I think about it in terms of what I've perceived or how I look at life. And it has nothing to do with love or death. And so it was very hard for me to think in that way of those, moment to moment just hitting off of each other just four four time or five four time and it just clicking 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 um my brain just wanted to put down how i felt how how i experienced something and it never fell into that rhyme scheme 
occasionally I'll do a very unique meter in my in the way I write, but I I could never perform that. It's very yeah. <laughs> I agree with everything that Ian said as well. It's it's a little bit of both. It's what you feel in the moment, you know? And and when it's necessary to make emphasis on on a certain point, it's true that poetry can do that, but tone can as well. So, you know, I, I think it's definitely up to the artist and everything goes. Uh, Thanks, Steph. <laughs> I was gonna say Anyone Griffin. else wanna chime in? Sorry, what was that, Steve? I said, I just wanted to see if Griffin had anything to chime in on this one. Oh yeah, Griffin or Passion? Any opinions on rhyming? I just don't construct my art that way at all. Like, like I just said, you all kind of have an idea that I'm just trying to build image chains most of the time. Um, so like, I'm, I'm pretty bad, <laughs> I guess. It's like traditional like rhymed thing. But like Steph just said, like you accomplish a lot with tone and like Ian said specifically um, rhythm is something that every spoken word poet has for themselves that kind of makes their poem sound like spoken word like um, I used to meet with a, another collective um, whose name cannot be spoken into this meeting and we did this prompt where when we were going to have a performance we would all like print out a copy of the poem and we would hand it to the person sitting to our left and we would just read the other person's poem like in our own style uh, which is always really uncomfortable and kind of really helps you understand like what you sound like so I really recommend this to anyone who's like trying to like quote find their voice is like um, ask someone to read your poem to you and you'll like hear it and you'll be like oh that's totally wrong and in understanding that it's wrong, you'll suddenly kind of know like what you sound like. So like tip. That's a great tip. I never thought of that before. I feel like that could be either really great or really embarrassing. <laughs> um, Passion, did you want to jump in to talk about um, your opinion on rhyming? Or um, we actually have another question that came in on um, Facebook from Carla and she would like to know what inspires your poetry. So if you want to, we've got, um, we're getting close to the end of our event tonight. So we've got a few minutes left, um, but if any, if everyone would like to maybe jump in and um, passion, if you want to talk about, um, you know, rhyming or what inspires you, feel free or anyone else can jump in uh, talking about inspiration. Um. I'd say the thing that inspires me the most is um, what's going on around me. And sometimes it's hard to, I guess, find that inspiration because you're looking for it. And so just <clears throat> um, taking a step back from thinking that, you know, it's always about you and how you perform and how someone is going to digest your poem, you kind of just have to um, let the ideas breathe and speak for themselves. Oh, that is a Basquiat inspired painting I did in high school. Thank you. Someone asked about the crown painting behind Passion. <laughs> Thank you, Passion. Does anyone else uh, want to talk about what inspires them to write? Um, I know Jesse mentioned writing and then going out into nature to practice. So that sounds like, like that could be something that's really inspirational. Um, but I'm, we're curious about everyone else. Um, you know, or if you have anything to add about maybe just what gets you writing. Um, okay, I will speak real quick. Um, a lot of times what, and I'm not, it doesn't always work for me, but um, a lot of us poets like prompts um, and prompts are a good way to get things started. Um, you can find them all over the place. There's books of them. There's, you can find them on the internet. Sometimes poets that you follow on social media will have like a, prompt of the week or prompt of the day. Um, and that's a really good way just to get the wheels turning. Um, but like most poets, yeah, we try to pull from our personal lives, what's going on, what we observe. Some poets are more polit uh, political, um, have more of a political mindset. So they really just like to talk about what's going on in like the uh, political climate or social justice. 
So some some poets are very kind of direct with what lane they like to talk on. Some poets are just all about love. Um, but I think a strong poet usually tries to, um, you know, challenge themselves and see if they could write to certain um, ideas or prompts. But um, it's all about kind of what comes from the inside. Whatever you're feeling, even if it's abstract, even if you're just like, you know, just trying to let words out and play with words, that's also something I love to do. I just love to play with words and see where it takes me. Sometimes I just write that first line and see what happens. And sometimes it goes into a cool direction. And sometimes it's like, okay, I'm not really sure what I was getting at, but that's what was inside. So. Thanks, Ian. Does anyone else want to jump in? Sure. We've got about five minutes left. Uh, so the way I approach uh, performance poetry is that it is my group therapy. And <laughs> it is a place where I can literally let things off my chest and get positive af affirmation back, which is really good for me. Um, <laughs> but when I write poetry, when I'm actually sitting down to write, it's because generally I have a specific idea in mind. I have something that I want to put on the page. And it just it, it's just words that are, are just in my head that I just want to put down and then create from. And yeah, that's how I create. I'm inspired by wordplay, as Ian said, nature therapy, as Jamie said, uh, poetry therapy, as Steve said. Uh, I'm inspired by so many things in response to the world, as Passion said, as far as headlines and you know news events and social justice movements, things going on all around us, the interesting times in which we live. And last, but certainly not least, I'm inspired by Kendrick Lamar winning a Pulitzer Prize. Thanks, Jesse. Anyone else wanna chime in? I'll say a couple things. <laughs> so, uh, I agree, and all the things that, that my partners here say resonate with me completely. Uh, it's definitely about getting what's inside out and processing what's outside in. And it's sometimes about synthesizing complex ideas into simple ones, and sometimes it's about making a mess out of something that's simple, <laughs> you know? Uh, but But out of all of those options or paths, I think that being free and creative in, in whichever path one chooses when going about writing is super important. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, so what uh, that rings true to something that Griffin said in the chat, which is, uh, he said, Steve gave me the best writing advice I ever got, just tell the truth. So I think that's something to really take away with from this event. Uh, just tell the truth and have a good time doing it, right? <laughs> Thank you guys. I, we are so excited that we finally got to have Spoken Views Collective join us. Um, we hope that we get to continue to do some future events with you. Um, we will be sure to share um, some of your information so that folks can find you on social media. Um, and we will, I believe we are going to archive the event. So it'll be available um, later on for folks to, we, you can watch this at a later time as well. Um, it's not just a one night thing. We will have it for folks to watch later. Um, so yeah, and uh, Rena said the, the, that writing advice is so solid. So I think she was referring to Jesse. So, but everyone has given great advice and great guidance on, on poetry, spoken word poetry. We love it. Um, and I know, you guys are, um, Ian, are you, basically you do have events, virtual events regularly, and you do accept, you're accepting new members, new poets into the fold. Is that true? Um, yeah, we're kind of uh, navigating through the virtual world and hoping to reopen to some live events uh, sooner than later since things are opening up and we've um, been just kind of looking at the guidelines of what we can do. Um, but yes, member, we always, we need new people just to get involved and just even if you just want to volunteer and hang out like we, we're always welcome to that um, and definitely looking for like high school age students just to mentor and to 
um, just kind of get that new generation of voices heard and, um, you know, get them motivated and uh, see, see what happens. Wonderful, thank you so much. All right, everyone, be sure to follow uh, Spoken Views Collective on Facebook um, and follow the library on Facebook. Uh, we are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We regularly post events, uh, live events on Facebook, and we also archive them at washoecountylibrary.us forward slash events. So uh, we also have a Washoe County Library YouTube channel where you can watch all of our archived events, whether live or video-based events. Um, so yeah, please look for us online to find more fantastic events like what we just had happen tonight. Um, and feel free to uh, jump on our events page to look for our um, virtual explorer, which is our regular, it's our quarterly guide to all of the great free events and resources that the library offers to the community. So thank you once again to Spoken Views Collective. We're going to give them the poetry snaps. Everybody give them the poetry snaps up in the air. We are so, so glad to have you. So everybody, if, if we can just get folks to say goodbye and say goodnight, and we will wish you well. Thank you again. Good night. Good night. Stay safe out there, team. Thank you, everybody. Later. Thank you. Keep, keep writing. <laughs> keep creating.